Good afternoon. It's going to be in English. I hope it's okay for you. Thanks for coming. I understand that you're tired. It's too loud, I think. You can turn a little bit down. Uh, so I, I, I think you're tired, and I'm glad you're tired. Jesus, it's too loud. One, two, three. Yeah, can you put it a little bit down? Because <clears throat> I can hear myself breathing. So I'm glad you're tired because this talk is not going to be technical at all. It's going to be motivational and maybe demotivational for some of you. Uh, I'll try to explain what I think, what I pay attention for when I hire programmers for our projects. And I've been doing this for years, for at least, at least the last five years I've been actively hiring programmers and they were working in our projects. So I'll explain what I pay, t pay attention for and how I value them. So that's what the talk will be about. And that will help you, I hope, to understand what you need to change in order to be valuable more on the market. So in order to, for your price to go up. I wrote an article on the blog, I'll give you the link later, two years ago. And I got some, some response in the comments. So people actually were not so happy about what I said. And uh, they, uh, they were not happy. <laughs> to say the least, uh, about the, the article which I wrote, and I will give you the same content right now. <laughs> and the question was, how much do you cost? And one of the readers actually said that <laughs> as a response. <laughs> and this is real. You can go on the blog, you can scroll down the comments, and you see that comment there. So people don't really like to be like measured like in numbers, so they protest against that, against that. Not all of them. Some people said that actually there's something good in the content I provide. So a few words about why, why me telling you this. A few words about myself. The organizers of the conference insisted that I have to show this slide. Okay, a few words about myself. I've been managing about 250 programmers over the last four or five years. So I'm actively working with programmers. Uh, I have some GitHub followers, like 1.2 thousands of followers, meaning that I am actually writing code on GitHub. I'm a Java developer myself. I write code every day. You can check my GitHub profile. You can actually follow me on Twitter, and my GitHub name is the same, Yegor256. Uh, I have the Oracle certification. I'm Oracle certified master for enterprise as an ar enterprise architect. This is the highest certification for Java architects and developers, meaning I know something about Java. Well, according to Oracle. Uh, I wrote two books about object-oriented programming, which I, uh, I brought here and there are two of them left. So if you want to buy them, you can meet me after the talk. I have some followers on Twitter. Well, it's not a huge number, but still, you can follow me. You can see that I write sometimes quite often about programming, and people follow me, meaning that they trust me. And I have some reputation on Stack Overflow, which is quite big. Well, not a huge number. Again, it's like just 50,000. We'll discuss a bit later what Stack Overflow means for all of us, but that's the number I have. So this is all about me. This is you know, trying to convince you that you, have to, you can't trust me. You can't trust my my reasoning. So why you? Why I'm telling you all this? Why I'm explaining? I believe that all of you are programmers and all of you are interested in growing, in making more money doing the same job. Well, doing better job and making more money. So that's why this talk. So it's going to be, it has to be motivational. Even some of you will think it's, it's not really good, will think that this content is not really for you. But I, I encourage you to, to think about it and tr maybe something will trigger. So. So what matters to me? This is my personal opinion. I'll, I'll give you seven things. Seven. Some of them are good when I see them in the programmer. Some of them are bad. So when I see good things, it means that the price of the programmer should go up. A small disclaimer, we hire programmers only as freelancers. So it's always about the price per hour. So when they come to us, we're not paying them salary. We're paying them certain price per hour. It could be $10 an hour, it could be $50 an hour, it could be $200 an hour. So it's a huge range of how much do you actually cost. And we develop Java code mostly. So in all cases, it's just the Java developer who's spending the same amount of time doing almost the same, but the price can go from $10 to $200. You can think about yourself, how much are you making right now per hour? And, and do you want to make $200? I think that not all companies value people like I do. 
Not all companies pay attention to the same things. But I think that in the future, more and more companies will do the same, will value people the same way. Number one, open source. I think it's predictable. So we think, I think, that if you contribute to open source, then your value on the market, then you deserve more money. So if you don't contribute to open source, if you have no GitHub profile, if you don't have any open source projects, then you deserve less. And that's what basically raised a lot of concerns on the blog. And people said, what? I'm, I'm a good programmer. I'm working for 15 years writing Java code. What open source are you talking about? I don't like this, you know, these kids playing in GitHub. I'm a serious programmer. This is wrong. I believe that open source is the key thing, the key factor, the key indicator of your seriousness, of your professional level. For a number of reasons. The reason number one, if you do contribute to open source, if you have a project there, it means you are brave. You're brave enough to do that. And this is really not really comfortable environment. It's really stressful. So you need to be brave. I, I can ex I, I'm, I'm opening, I'm starting like one, two projects, maybe two, three projects a year in GitHub, my own projects. And I close one or two every year. It means they fail. It means I start them, people, well, I put them on the market, I announce, I, I, I announce them, I invite people to use, and they don't use them. The idea doesn't work, they don't like the product for some reason, I close them, I like trash them. For, for, so it means I have to be really brave to every time to start from scratch and put my ideas on the market and show them to the people. Nobody pay me for that and, and everybody criticize me. So it's like really small, <laughs> you're really getting almost nothing from the market, but you're giving a lot. So you have to be brave to do that. And if you are brave for doing that, you will be a good programmer in our project. You'll be brave enough to try something new, to experiment, to take risks. That's a really good uh, quality of a developer. A second one means you're creative. If you are doing open source, you're creative enough. So it means that you can find and you know how to find opportunities to create something new. You're not just taking the well-known Java library, whatever, Spring or Hibernate and saying, that's the way it is. This is the documentation, this is the Hibernate. My job is just to put these two pieces together and make sure my software works, that's it. No, you're saying, look at this Hibernate. There is a small piece which needs improvement or maybe the whole Hibernate needs improvement. Maybe I can do something really different. And that means you're creative to do that. So you have the creativity. Not so many people have that. Most people, unfortunately, they just, they just put pieces together, get the paycheck, and go home. Some people find opportunities for improvement. They see what's wrong in the, in, the, in the market, and nobody pays them for that, but they still find the opportunity and they fix that stuff. It's really good for us if you have that quality. If you come to us being creative, it's really good because you will find that things, that pieces in our projects, in the commercial project, and you will have the courage, the, you will be brave, and you will have the courage and creativity to fix them. And number three, you're passionate about software development. It's not about money. You know, nobody's going to pay you for open source. And I'm saying they will even take your money, your time, first of all. You will have to spend it to be there. But if you're passionate about software development, if you really want to be there, if you really care about what's going on around you, if you're not just doing it for money, then it's very important for us because you will be inside. And I'll explain now why, why it's important to have a programmer who is passionate. Most people saying on the blog and everywhere, I've heard the same reason. They're saying, nobody paying me for that. So I'm working in the company. I'm getting my salary for creating the code which my company is selling. So what are you talking about open source? My company will not, will not like me to do open source development because they pay me for eight hours being in the office developing their piece, their software, their code. So that's the main, like the main... Uh, counter argument against my idea for open source. I'm telling them, look guys, you have to be in the open source. And they're telling me back, like, look, I don't have the motivation for that. And I, want, I don't want to spend my free time doing open source because I have a family, I have my hobbies, I have everything. So leave me alone. I spend eight hours in the office writing this enterprise Java code, and then I go home and watch TV. So what, where do I find time for open source? My answer is that, uh, this is what's happening. I'll show you the slide which I showed on the Riga Dev Days. I've been, I've, I was doing the motivational, motivational talk a few weeks ago on Riga Dev Days. And this is the slide I showed them. 
This is what's happening in all companies right now. This is the piece of code which your company creates, no matter what are you doing, no matter what projects you're working on. This is the code you're creating. This is the code you're contributing to. This is your private repository. So you are writing this Java code. And this is the code we write for you. So that's the code you take from the market and use it in order to deliver the service for the customer. So the service is what you sell. Let's say you're developing, I don't know, Facebook. So this big circle is the Facebook application, which customers are paying for and customers are using. And then this is a small piece of code which you are creating as a programmer sitting in the office of the Facebook. And that's the amount of code, of, of the, that's the amount of code you're taking from the market. So compare the size. It was, a different it was a different situation 20 years ago. And 20 years ago, open source was small and your private code was big. And that's when companies actually paid you to develop locally and the code which stays in the company. This time is gone. We're not there anymore. Now it's a time of open source. Now more and more companies are doing business like that. We're taking a lot of stuff from the, from the market. We're taking a lot of free code and then we're putting a lot of a small piece of code on top of that and the product is ready. So if you are just working in this small circle, which is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller every day, it means that you're smaller, slower and slower getting out of the market. You're not in the market anymore. Your market is getting smaller and smaller. You have to be in this circle, not in that one. So if you're sitting in the office and, th and saying, I'm so proud about that green circle, for how long are you going to be proud about it? Your time will be eventually will be done. So you have to be in that place. And if you're not there, your value is lower. We're going to give you less money. So that's all about open source. I think it's important to understand that you have to be in this blue circle instead of being in that small one. The second point is location. So it's quite often I hire programmers from, any, from many places in the world, from Moscow, Ukraine, uh, San Francisco, Brazil, everywhere. And usually people think that if, if I live in Kyiv, then my price per hour is, let's say, $25. But then I move to Chicago and my price is suddenly five times bigger. So that's how it was before. It worked, bef it worked like that 20 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, when the markets were local. It was a local Ukrainian market, it was a local American market. And really, just being the same Java developer, doing exactly the same job, it was possible to just change the location, get the visa, travel from Kyiv to Chicago, and then boom, you're five times richer. You have five times more money. It's not the case anymore. For me, as an employer, it doesn't matter for you where you live. It doesn't matter whether it's Chicago or Kyiv. I'm just hiring a programmer from the market. I'm not, I don't need Kyiv programmer anymore. I don't need Chicago programmer. I just need a good Java programmer. So that means that this logic doesn't work anymore. Well, it, it does work for now, for some times in most cases, but the future is different. In 10 years, it will not work at all. We will just look at the programmer and say, who cares where you are? Where are you in Chicago, San Francisco, whatever. There will be less and less local teams, co-located teams. There will be more and more remote distributed teams. And that's why you will, you will not be any more key of programmers or Minsk programmers or Moscow programmers. You'll be just programmers on the market. And then it's going to be the question, how much do you cost? You will not be able just to move to San Francisco and then become five times richer. Uh, I'm usually comparing, this is like a metaphor I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to use in this case. So let's say you have a, uh, you have a taxi driver. Uh, a one taxi driver says, uh, uh, I, I'll take you to the airport for $25. And then another driver says, and I'll take you to the airport for $125. Well, because I have five kids and I have a big house. So, <laughs> so for you as a client, it doesn't really matter what extra uh, expenses that person has. How many kids, how many houses, how many, how, many, how many do you have? You just want to get to the airport. 
So years ago, it was really important. It was impossible to have remote developers. We all had local developers. So it was for us the only choice is, okay, you're going to drive me. I'm going to pay you for all your expenses just because you live in Chicago. Your cost of living is so high. Okay, then our project will have to cover them. Even though you're writing the same code as that uh, guy from Kiev who is charging five times less, that time is gone. So my point is that, I'm getting to my point. My point is that you are as good the question is, are you as good as your breakfast? So now in Kiev, your, your breakfast costs, let's say, $5. You're going to move to San Francisco, your breakfast will cost $15 or $20. So you have to ask yourself a question. Will you be as good as the breakfast you want to get? Because right now in this country, you're getting some certain social services from the country. In America, these services will cost more. But you won't be able just to move there being the same Java developer. You need to think about... Uh, about uh, how to become better, not just to change the location. And maybe that's the trend I think is going to happen in the future, is that the trend will be quite the opposite. So we will, people will move from more expensive locations to less expensive locations, being the same Java developers. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be the trend, and you, will have to, you have to think about your location as well. Instead of moving to more expensive locations and just spending money there, or most of your money spending there for expensive living, maybe that will be the trend to move to cheaper territories and get cheaper breakfast and then get more money on your pocket because you will be you know, at the same level Java developer as that people in San Francisco. That's the trend. So for me, as, a, as an employer, when somebody comes to me and say, pay me more because I live in Berlin, I give that reason. Like, why do I need to pay you more because you're in, in, in Berlin if I have somebody else from Bali, from this Fifi island in Thailand, who charges less, three times less, but doing exactly the same job. So that argument of the location is not going to work. So it's, ne it's negative. I mean, for me, the, ch the more expensive your location, the less interesting you are for me. Point number three is Stack Overflow. You know what it is. It's a popular platform. And um, the situation now is that you are either in this platform, you have these reputation points, you have the profile there, you know how to work with the platform, or you're out of the market. There's just two options. You can't be anymore sitting in the office being enterprise Java developer and saying, hey, I know all the answers. I have books. I have documentation. Why do I need Stack Overflow? It's not the answer anymore because Stack Overflow is not just a, is not just a huge knowledge base, the biggest in the world, which provides basically all possible answers to all possible technical questions right now. But it also a huge, it's a great instrument for programmers. It's like the IDE. We're using IntelliJ uh, uh, because it makes our work easier. It helps us to develop the software. Stack Overflow is the same tool. It's like a smartphone. You're using smartphone not because it's it's, it's a nice, well, not because it's nice or you like it. It's a tool which you cannot avoid using. You need to know how it works. The same for the Stack Overflow. You need to know how it works. It's an instrument which you need to learn. Why it's an instrument? Who, let me ask the question. Who on Stack Overflow has got a reputation over 5,000? Raise your hands. One, two, three, three people. Three, four. And how many people are here? Maybe 100. So that's a shame. So you definitely have to be there. You have to definitely have to be in this platform and at least, well, 5,000 is nothing. But you have to be there every day. If you're not using it, it means you don't know how to use it. So first of all, it's, a, it's an instrument when people come to me, programmers come to me and say, I have a good reputation on Stack Overflow. It's an indicator that these people, that programmer, knows how to ask questions. It's not easy. It's not an easy skill. You cannot get it tomorrow. You cannot say, I know how it works. If I'll have a question, I'll go to Stack Overflow and ask it. No, you will not be able to use it unless you're using it for every day. So you need to learn how to use it. So every time when you have a question, a technical question, try instead of asking your friend, asking somebody on Telegram, asking somebody on Slack, instead go to Stack Overflow, ask that question, format it correctly, tag it correctly, put it on the correct subject, make sure they don't close it because it's a duplicate, and then get an answer. And you will see it's not so easy. It's way easier to say in, 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 in Telegram, for example, in a, in a group chat, like, hey guys, can you, can you help me with this and that? Who is, who is a member of the pro JVM, JVM chat on Telegram? One, two, three, four. 
not so many. Again, you can, you can try that, you can, you can join that chat as well if you're like Java developer and you will see that people, that's a shame as well. I, I'm a member of that chat on Telegram and that's a shame to see how people often and frequently they ask questions, technical questions, just because they're lazy or they don't know how to go to Stack Overflow and use it. So they just throw the questions to friends and like, hey, do you know how to install this something in Gradle? How can I fix that in Gradle? And somebody help them. That's easy, but that's lazy. And that means that when you join my project and I will, I will put you in front of a difficult task, you'll be like, hey, who's going to help me? And you will go to some chats, you will go to some, to some friends, but you will not use the main instrument, which is the most powerful in the world. So my point is that you have to be there. Try to ask questions there. You will see how difficult it is, but you will learn. Second is that you need to know how to answer. The Stack Overflow is a platform where you answer questions. And while you're gonna, in, when, you're gonna, when you will answer questions, you will learn and understand how to ask them better. Because you will be on the opposite side. You will answer what people are asking. You will see how they make mistakes while asking. You will correct them. You will see that this question I'm not going to answer because it's asked in the, in the correct way, in not in the correct way. So it's difficult to answer. So I'm not going to touch it. And then you will realize, wait, but I'm doing the same when I'm asking questions. I'm doing the same mistakes. I'm, new, I'm not formatting it correctly. I'm not putting labels there correctly. I'm not all of the mistakes I'm making. And then you realize, so in order to ask them the question properly, you need to do certain things. So it's a, it's a second skill is how to answer. You will learn how to answer. And of course, the skill number three is how to find information on Stack Overflow. It's a huge database, huge knowledge base. And most people don't know how to use it because they, because they don't use it. But to find something there, it's a problem because they have millions of questions now, millions. And they're not only about programming, they're about everything. Love, text, I don't know, writing, sex, everything. They have questions on all different subjects. You can find like territories there where you can find, when you can ask questions and answer them. So it's not easy to find something there. And if somebody comes to me and say, hey, I have a huge reputation on Stack Overflow, not huge, but at least 5,000. It means to me that that person, that programmer, when, when working in, our, in my project will be able to find the information quickly. Not going to be stuck and say, I don't know what to do. Just give me the documentation. I don't know. He or she will be able to find. The next one, your age and your experience in years in programming. This doesn't matter to me. So when people come and say, my, rep my, my experience in Java is 10 years, or I'm writing Java for 7 years or 15 years, it doesn't matter at all. Actually, it matters, it's even negative, because if you are a Java developer for 15 years, and you don't have Stack Overflow, and you don't have GitHub contribution, and you don't have all other things, it means to me that you are, I mean, I'm not going to hire you, or your, your rate will be lower. So young people, just three years in the market with a, a lot of contribution to open source, with a lot of fuzz, a lot of noise made on stock of Stack Overflow, they are the most wanted programmers by me as an employer. So I want that people. I don't want old guys sitting in this Java since Java was created and doing, and, and, and with no other credentials on their, in their hands. It means there are nobodies. They just spent time in some company and some company trusted them for, for 15 years. I don't want to be the same stupid company as that one before. I don't want to trust them for another few years. I want them to work with me. I don't want to just to sit with me and wait for the next salary. So if you, are, if you don't have many other credentials and you have such a long, many, many years experience, don't show it. Don't, don't tell me like, hey, I'm a Java developer of seven years. Just hide that information. Just, just say, I'm a Java developer looking forward. Like one, one person sent me a resume a few, like a few, a few months ago. Uh, and asked me to review the resume. And I told him, like, you're so young, the person was like one year on the market or so, so he didn't, have, he didn't have almost anything. But it was clear that he's looking for something interesting. He was, I, th I thought that he was quite motivated and, and passionate about software development. And I told him, put in your resume the text that this is what I have. I know this, this, and that, but my plan is to create an open source library, to get a certification to contribute to that, to that library. So this is my plan, which will show you me as an employer that even though you're young, you're just one year in the market, this is your plan for improvement. But if you just show me that your age and your years in the market, it's not going to work. The second one, uh, the next one, publicity. I'm talking about your public presence on the market. Actually, this is the, the main message which I wanted to deliver is that now, and it's happening more and more, 
not the, div not the employer must be a judge and decide how much do you cost, but the market has to do that. So when somebody comes to me with a resume, I look at that resume and, asking, uh, and I'm asking, how market validated you so far? So if you have an open source, if you have a GitHub project, an open source project, and that project is popular, that means that the market already said, this guy is trustable, this guy is technically competent, I want to hire him. So the market has to judge you, and publicity, like for example, this public speaking here, or writing a blog, or writing a book, or uh, it's organizing meetups and training courses. This is what, uh, this is what uh, shows me that you are validated by people around you. So somebody already told you, you're doing this wrong, fix it. You're not right here, fix it. But if you're brave enough to put your content in public and get the public opinion from, from people around you, from the community, then it means something to me. So the key word here is the community. The community is your value. The community is your asset. When you come to me as a programmer, if you're just a programmer, it's one thing. If you bring together with you the community, then the employer, the person who hires you, the company who hires you, will really potentially be interested to work with you because you bring the community together. It's not just a developer. I'll show you another slide from Riga Dev Days, which is also quite interesting. So I, I showed them that this, I think, I believe, is a career path for technical people. Some of them complain that the tester is staying there, but I'm showing the exactly the same slide. So even though I agree, maybe the tester is not the right place for the tester, but usually people grow like that. So they, they, they are testers, and then they're junior developers, then they're senior, then they become technical architect. But the next position now on the market is called technology evangelist. So if you want to really get $200 an hour instead of $20 an hour, you cannot get it if you stay on the level of software architect. You have to jump to the next level, which is, which is evangelist or advocate, which means exactly the same software architect, but with the community. So you have to have a community of followers, of people who listen to you, who know you, who follow you on GitHub, who follow you on Twitter, who read your blog, who, who follow your newsletter, whatever, who kind of trust you on some level, and that community makes you more expensive. Because when you come to the company, when you join the company, then for me as an employer, you bring with you together the whole community. If I'm developing a product, for example, and I, and I invite you and I hire you, then it means that you will promote that product for your whole community. Well, in most cases. Who of you can say that you have more or less readable blog? Can you raise your hand? One, two, three, four, five, about 10 people. Again, there are about 100 people in the room and only, well, more than 100, and only 10 of you are actually writing something on the blog. I would recommend, of course, not everybody should write. Not everybody is a good writer, but I'm recommending you to think about starting to build. Maybe you don't want to be evangelist. Maybe you want to stay on the level of just a programmer. But if you really want to go up, so these people who raise their hands, they are the most interesting candidates for me if I hire a really professional developer. So they, their prices per hour will be definitely higher than all of you guys. So if you care about that price, think about building the community. And building the community takes time. You cannot build it tomorrow. You cannot build it in a month. You cannot build it in a year. I'm, just, I'm, I'm in the process of doing the same. I'm, I'm doing this speech exactly for the same reason. Nobody's paying me for talking here. And, well, I'm just doing it for free. But I understand that some of you will follow me on Twitter. Some of you will buy my book. Some of you will follow me on GitHub. And you will become my community. And then in a year or two years, when I will be on the market and somebody will want, for example, to hire me, you will come with me. So I will join, for example, I don't know, any company, some company. I will join. And some of you will come with me because you will continue to follow me. I'll, tweet, I'll say on Twitter, hey, guys, I just joined, I don't know, Intel. Uh, I, uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm now a developer of IntelliJ, for example. So I would recommend to use that product. So many of you, my followers, will pay attention to what I'm saying. So that's my point. So you have to be evangelist if you want to be paid well. Education. Education, formal education, doesn't matter for me at all. So if you come and say, hey, I'm, I have a diploma in this and that university, I have a diploma here and there, unless it's Stanford, unless it's MIT, unless it's something really big, I don't pay attention. Because we all know that this formal education is way behind 
modern technologies. So unfortunately, I'm not saying it's good because I'm, I'm a practical, we are doing practical projects. We are not doing scientific research. We're not doing any uh, really like mathematics in our projects. We just create some products which need to work. And most of you work in that kind of project. And that kind of project is not going to pay attention to your education, your formal education. Fortunately or unfortunately, but that's true. First of all, because we know that that education is way behind, it's not as professional, they cannot really teach you what you need. And second, because we don't know what that university means. Some San Paolo Technical Institute, how do I know whether it's like a, a small room with two people sitting there or it's really a huge university institute? I don't know, I don't want to care, I'm just, I'm just ignoring that line. And if you put that line on top of your CV, then it means to me that you kind of trying to fool me or something. Because you also understand that, that that education gave you nothing. Well, especially in that country. In most cases, you just paid for it and you get the diploma. So if you put the line on top of and saying like, hey, I am MSc and I am so proud of that, it's not a good sign. And the last one is certifications. I believe it's very important. Certifications are formal documents which are given by well-known companies like Oracle gave me the certification. Who of you actually got some certifications from any, not, I'm not talking about BrainBench or a similar, I'm talking about it's like Oracle, IBM, Microsoft. Can you raise your hands? Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> so about half of you, so about 50%, maybe a bit less, you actually got that certification. So pay attention to that. It's not just, it's not just papers, they're not just numbers, they're really important. For a few reasons. First of all, it's stressful to get them. Those of you who got them, who paid money for that, it's at least $200 or a little bit or more. So you know what it is. It's stress. It's an exam. It's like in school. And it's not the exam you can pay for. You cannot bribe that exam. You really have to pass the exam. So for me, it means that you, are really, uh, you really did that. So you managed to take stress. You managed to, to put yourself together and, and go through this really difficult process of certification. Second, it means to me that most probably you don't have knowledge gaps. So when you pass the certification, they kind of give you the body, of, the body of knowledge which covers almost everything you need to know. So if you pass uh, Oracle certified uh, uh, Java developer, then they will ask you questions on everything you need to know in the area of Java, more or less. Of course, you can miss something. You, can, you, can, you will not have questions on everything. But while preparing for the certification, you will have to learn everything that the, the, the Java world has. And that's important. It means for me as your employer, it means it's really good because you don't have knowledge gaps. You will know more or less everything. And the last one is that you're serious. So if you got certifications, means for me that you're serious about your profession. You're not just writing code and then you're going to be a taxi driver if it doesn't work. No, you really want to be the software developer. You invested your time, you invested your money, so you want to be the developer. It means you're not going to quit just because something goes wrong. You will be serious. That's it. So to do, my recommendation for you. First of all, contribute to open source. Number one, don't, don't wait for it. Start now. Do something. Start your own project. Contribute to existing projects. You have to be there. Do it on your free time. Second, move to Thailand. <laughs> you need to change the, well, think about the location. Just the location is not going to make you rich. You need to, well, it's a joke, of course, but think about the location. Just being in San Francisco is not going to make you rich. Maybe for now it's going to work, but in the long run, it's not going to happen. Uh, build Stack Overflow profile. Build it now. Start now. If you spend like one hour a week for Stack Overflow, just answering questions there for people who are trying to get answers, and if you every time ask that question there instead of asking your friend, you will get a really good profile in a year. Just spend that one year. You'll be so happy. You will see how it works. Uh, get Oracle certifications. We're in the Java world, so Oracle is the company which will give you the certification. That's important. And submit your talk to the next conference, GeoConf. They, they, they're waiting for your talks. They're like, I'm here for the second time. People probably, you've heard me all here already. So we need new faces, we need new talks, we need new presentations. And you have a chance to do that. So be, be brave, don't be shy. Submit something, something that you work on. Submit a talk, they will review it, you will be on this stage, and then that video will be online and there will be a huge contribution to your resume. You will be able to show it to your future employer that look, I was speaking at GEConf, I'm not nobody, I'm somebody, because the committee reviewed my talk, I did the effort to prepare it, so all that stuff. So try it out. This is the link I promised. So this is the link to the article on the blog. You can check it out, see the comments. Actually, the amount of comments is way bigger than the, the piece of the article. I'm done. Thank you very much.
Вопросы поднимайте руки. Let's try in English. If you can, you can ask in Russian, I'll translate. Or Ukrainian. Uh, thank you for a really good talk. So I have just a short remark about Stack Overflow because uh, almost all software products has, uh, have GitHub repositories, so it's possible to post a question or a bug request directly there. And I me personally do almost every time, so not every question should be on Stack Overflow. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's not like a question, it's a comment, right? So you're saying that we, we should not post everything on Stack Overflow, we can get answers locally. Definitely. I'm, I was really active on Stack Overflow a few years ago. I was posting actively, like posting questions actively. Now I'm doing it every time I develop something. I can't find an answer on the internet. I, I, I scroll the, the Stack Overflow, I don't find it. I post a question, but not everything. Of course, you will answer questions yourself more and more. But still, I'm writing code. I, can, I, I think I'm an experienced developer, but I have questions every week. You can check my profile on Stack Overflow. You can see recently asked questions and they're from like five days ago. So I'm doing that. So, yeah. Перед тем, перед тем, как следующий вопрос. Ребята, остаемся, пожалуйста, в этом зале. Будет небольшая информация организационная. И потом уже начнется виски пати и боф сессии. То есть не расходимся после доклада. Спасибо. Thank you for your talk. Uh, so the, the question about what do you think about uh, good LinkedIn profile? I know it. Uh, about what? Say it a bit louder. About LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question about LinkedIn profile. I think you can forget about this social network. I think it's dead. So honestly, nobody pays attention to LinkedIn anymore. Just delete. Well, don't delete the profile. It's it has to stay there. But there is no point in being there at all. There is no business reason. I think it's complete trash. So if you really want social networking, then go on Facebook. So Facebook is the social network. Ah, oh, Nicola, I know you love LinkedIn. But LinkedIn, I'm telling you, it's well, it's my personal opinion, but it's really it's trash. But but it does work. Uh, what? It does work. Does it work? Does work. It does work. Well, it's just a collection of, of information about people. That's all it does. But it's not about information. It always attracts uh, HR specialists. And exactly. It's just for recruiting. So these recruiters, it's a network for recruiters and people who are looking for jobs. So if I go there and somebody contact me and say, hey, I'm looking for a job, I know this person is desperate. So no serious programmer will look for a job or for anything, for sales contact, for anything on LinkedIn. That's what I know. I live in California for the last five years. And, and LinkedIn is just a collection of CVs and resumes and personal details and that's all. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm not using it. Even not just using it, but if somebody says that, hey, how great my LinkedIn profile is, it's, it's, a, it's a red flag for me. It means the person doesn't understand what's going on, especially if he's a developer or she. So that's my recommendation. Again, it's my personal. So don't pay, definitely don't invest anything there. Don't try to build your profile, to join that groups, to make friends there, to make connections. Nobody pays attention to that anymore. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your very interesting speech. And uh, you, you initially you said you got a huge resonance, and I have a comment on this. Uh, if you know Yulia Pichersko, you know her. It's uh, this the speech about fifty thousand rubles. Uh -huh. So you just said something like, if you have less than five thousand points on Stack Overflow, you should not have sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to help, but you can try. I mean, <laughs> but this 5,000, it's kind of a, it's like a, it's like a goal. So try to achieve that. It's, well, my friend, well, I, I, I gave the same, not speech, but I tried to, in, uh, to uh, motivate a friend of mine a few years ago to be on Stack Overflow. And he spent a month and he got 1,000 reputation. He was doing full-time job doing something else. So he was just time to time asking questions, answering questions, and he got 1,000 in just one month. So spend a year and you will get 10,000, that's for sure. Just, just stay there and you will love it. It's really, it's really excitement to be there. It's, it's a nice platform. More. Thank you, Igor. Uh, I have a question about Stack Overflow. Uh, as we know, there was a, a reputation boom in 2012 and uh, now due to some Stack Overflow limitations, you cannot get too much reputation. 
the, it is limited to 200 per day. So you, it is not e so easy to get 100,000, for example, reputation currently. How to deal with it? Because how to deal with it? Well, yeah, it's a good question. Some people saying that, like you said, it's difficult to get a lot in one day, and it's also difficult to get a huge reputation because many questions are answered already. For example, I'm getting a reputation, still getting points every day for the questions which I asked three, four years ago. And they are really primitive questions. If I show them, I'll be really embarrassed because that questions show that I'm not really a Java developer, but uh, some really junior. So I asked them like six years ago. So I was like in a different, I was in C++ at that time. So I was asking really weird questions about Java, and people answered them, and they become popu became popular for some reason. And now I'm still collecting reputations. I have, for some questions, I have like 200 upvotes, 300 upvotes for really stupid stuff, which is like really primitive and basic. Like you know that story, it was recently on Twitter about that very popular question on Stack Overflow, how to exit the VI editor. <laughs> Probably you heard about it. It was like a few, a few days ago. So how to exit, it was a million views. And Stack Overflow is saying that 0.005% of traffic, of the entire traffic on the platform, which is a huge amount, is coming just to that question. So obviously, the author of this question is getting a lot of points for asking really primitive questions. Hey, how do I exit this damn tool? That's all. So of course, you know, that's a, this is ridiculous. Of course, that, that kind of is a misbalance between the really people who are asking really difficult, long, long questions about something really technical, and then some guy cannot basically exit the VI. That's true, that's true. But if you contribute regularly, you will get some reputation. I'm not looking for people with 100,000 reputation on Stack Overflow. First of all, there are not so many people like that on the world. I mean, maybe there are a few hundred people like that, maybe a thousand or so. So that, that people I'm not really interested to hire as well, so I didn't mention that. But if you have so much reputation on Stack Overflow, meaning that you're a Stack Overflow junkie, so you're just addicted to it, so you're spending too much time there. This is also not good. Because you're not using it as a tool as such, but you're using it as an addiction. So you enjoy it too much, and instead of writing code, you're just answering questions, asking questions. Like John Skid, probably you know the guy. So John Skid is, has got one million reputation on Stack Overflow. One million. So he's with the platform for, a year, for six or seven, they started like seven or six years ago. So he's with the platform for so many years, and if you check the profile right now, he answered the last question two, half, two hours ago. So he's all the time, every time I check his profile, the last question answered was two hours ago. So he's actually answering every day, every day for six years. I don't know what he's doing in, in, I mean, what he's doing in, a full, in his job, but this is also not what I want. Because if I hire you, I understand you will be, can, you'll continue doing that. So that's too much. So something between like 5,000 and 20,000, 30,000, that's enough. It just shows me that you know how to use the tool. That's all I need from you. Then I can go to the tool and see what kind of questions you ask. What answers you gave there? How you how you did that? What 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 your what is your you know what's your professional interest? What questions do you ask? Do you ask about VI or you ask something more complex? Yeah. Uh, hi Igor, uh, you have been writing lots of books. You have been participating in Stock Stack Overflow. You also have lots of speeches in different conferences. So if you had a chance to hire yourself in your company. How much money would you pay to yourself? <laughs> so this is my question. Huh. <laughs> 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 um, Next question. <laughs> yeah, I think so. The what? No, we'll. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, how about copyright? When you are answering something on Stack Overflow and maybe you need to publish some production code, you just. Uh, yeah, I understand no, no. the question. So you're asking, can I really like disclose a lot of information on Stack Overflow if I'm working yeah. on some private project and I go and ask that question there? That's also a good question. That's also your skills of how to ask a question if you need information for your private thing. Like for, it happened to me many times when I have something going on in my server, for example, with the certification and I need like some passwords. So I need to ask all of this. But 
I cannot provide the secret information. So I need to remove it here or there, and then the answer is going to be like, hey, you need to show us real information. We cannot answer if you say full bar, full bar. We can't answer like that. So give us real information. I'm like, I cannot give you real because real means like real data. So you need to work on that. So you spend some time to actually prepare that fake information and say, this is my password, this is my hash key, this is this and that. So actually it looks like that. So they believe you, they trust you that you're showing something real and then they start ask, answering you. Because you show full bar, full bar, they understand that you're, sometimes you're gonna get an answer. Is it the homework? So they will, that's a really typical problem in Stack Overflow. You post a question and the answer will be, is it your homework? So it's some, some teacher give you that and you're trying to use us to solve that? Go back, so we're not gonna do that. So because you're giving us some full, full, full information, meaning this is not a real problem you're working on. So you need to present that. <laughs> so, you, so you need to prepare the real information and that will take time, it's not so easy. That's again, it's to my point, that it's not so easy. Thanks. Do we have more? Yep. More? Yeah, what? <laughs> <Do -sto? laughs> okay, do it. I'm yeah, ready. Thanks, Igor, for this talk. Um, my, I have like 15 reputation points on Stack Overflow, <laughs> which means I won't have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girls. And um, I mean, the problem of this, this position is basically you base ev everything on whatever worked for you. And meaning this is the survivor buyer. So you think that since it worked for you, it will work for everyone. It's like if you won the lottery, you say to everyone, yeah, guys, you should play the lottery <laughs> because it worked for me. And you should this buy number 25, yeah? yeah. Uh, this is survival buyer. I, I think that perhaps you might expand your stuff be because it's not really true. What If Stack Overflow worked for you, that's good. It, it didn't work so much for me. I don't care about that. Um, I mean, the message should be more about the contribution, the work, and the, the talks, and whatever. What do you think? I, well, first of all, I agree. I said in the beginning of the talk, which you missed, I think, so, yeah, so I said that uh, this is my personal opinion, how I hire people and how I pay attention to how much money to give that to that programmers. So don't take it like a universal truth, definitely. But second, I think that uh, you're right about Stack Overflow may not work for you as a professional developer in all the problems to solve. So probably it didn't work at all if you got just 15 points, meaning that you, you were not able not even to find some good answer there, but you were not even able to ask a good question there. So you were, it was really something, you were working on something, not maybe a programming problem, huh? Maybe the, the sex problem. <laughs> so, that, so, so I don't know. <laughs> we are going in the wrong directions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe you were working on something else, so, but, but these people are less complicated than you. They're just practical programmers, and, and including myself. So we actually solve Java problems. And I believe, well, in my case, again, I, I'm, I'm telling you, every week I need, I have a problem. You can check my profile, and you will see. Every week I ask something there. I don't know, maybe because I don't have so many friends as you have, so I don't have like people sitting next to me, and I can ask them because this is a problem of big offices, actually. So that's what I've seen in many situations where people sit together, they have like big community in the office, they always have a temptation to do the easy way. Because it's way easier to turn, right, to, you, to turn your head right and say, hey, dude, can you help me with this? And then sure, definitely, I'll help you with that and you will help me later. So this is easy, this is how you ruin yourself, you ruin your reputation. And then, and then you will say like, hey, Stack Overflow doesn't work for me, my friend works for me. And what happens if you lose that friend, I mean, who knows everything, and then you move to another project, which is distributed project, where all the people are sitting in different places, in Thailand, in Bali, in Kyiv, and, and in, in London. And then what, where do you find that friend? So if you don't have the skill to use to find that friend on Stack Overflow, I think this, this, this is applicable to everybody, I think so, but again, Good topic to discuss yeah. on whiskey yeah. party. Thank, thank, yeah. Good topic to discuss on whiskey party. Yeah, definitely. So see you all later. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. <laughs>